everybody, I'm Beth Davis and welcome back. Welcome to myself <laughs> to Teachable Tuesday. It's been a little while. I'm so happy to be with you and I can't wait to tell you just a little bit of the goodness of the Lord uh, while we were in Ireland. I can't wait to share it with you and uh, just, sh just to share the goodness of God with you today. So grab a Bible grab a friend, grab a little hot mug of tea. If you're in Ireland, they seem to drink tea all day long. <laughs> so, oh, it's evening there. Guys, can't wait to share this word with you. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit. Thank you that you're already here. Thank you for your wraparound presence, God, that you come and um, you surround us with your love with your favor, with your protection. Thank you for who you are and how you love. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Guys, I just love praying with you. I just wanted to keep going, but let's get started. How about that? So yesterday I was working on a, a really exciting new project for Blessed Is She and Lots of times that means that I get to spend the day just immersed in the word, praying and um, looking for God's movement and, and listening to his voice for different things that we've got coming up. So I was doing that yesterday. I was really focusing on and praying with some of the names and the characteristics of God. Super cool, right? Uh, and, and one of the characteristics or names that I was praying with and, and combing the scriptures for was God as provider. And you know, it's really interesting. It's, I'm not only listening to the Lord and kind of pulling from my own uh, past experiences with God, verses that have meant something to me, stories that come up in my heart. I'm also, to be honest, just Googling verses about God as provider. And as I'm reading through these and I, I'm, I'm revisiting my Bible, my history with the Lord, something very interesting happened. The Lord gave me a little insight that all of the verses, all of the stories that Google, that my heart and my experience pointed to in the word about God as provider were stories. They, there were very few verses that were blatantly stating God is a provider. You can trust God because he provides. No, instead, which was so cool and, and so enlightening and exciting was to realize that the proof of God as a provider came about in the lives of people in the word. So when I'm studying God as provider, um, I'm reading about Abraham uh, being asked to sacrifice his son Isaac and, and walking with the Lord in faith, believing God's word. And yet, in the end, God did not ask him to sacrifice his son, but he himself provided the lamb. Uh, isn't that incredible? So that's, that's a story of God's provision. And I think back in my own life through this catalog, I, I've made an inventory of ways that God has provided for me. I shared on the retreats all year long about how God provided an orange for me every day of Lent. And I pass that on, not because I think an orange is the end all be all, but because for me, it became a signal grace of God's faithfulness, his provision, his abundance in my life. Just like for Abraham, the ram became a sign of God's provision, of his faithfulness, of his abundance to his son Isaac. So we're meant to, to collect a, a catalog, to, to inventory our lives and our experiences of God in prayer so that we can believe that God is a provider. And I'll share just a couple of those stories, a couple of the ways that God has recently provided for me in the hopes that it will, um, it will buoy up your expectation it will buoy up your hope and, and deepen and increase your trust that God is a provider. And I share them to tell you that I'm still on the journey. I'm still learning what it is to trust God and that he is trustworthy, that he is a provider. But every time God shows his provision in my life, I've got to take hold of that 
claim it as my own and hold God accountable for it. That means I want to continue to give him credit for it. Not thinking, oh, God came through that one time, but I wonder if he'll come through again. No, no, no. God came through for me. He provided for me. So now my faith is bolstered. There's scaffolding now beneath my faith. There's a foundation there. And so I can trust that in the future, God will be faithful. God will provide. So for example, I'm always learning <laughs> to trust God and that God is a provider on the retreats. Now, there are innumerable ways that I need God to provide for me. And yet I work very hard to make arrangements for myself. I try for months in advance to find the right speakers, to pray about the content, uh, to meet with those speakers, to, to bring this like golden thread of the theme throughout the whole day. I work very hard to be faithful to the vision that God has given us. And yet, sometimes I find myself two weeks before a retreat with no chaplain. And that happened in Ireland. It's happened at previous retreats. You would think there would be some scaffolding there <laughs> and I would begin to trust God. But that's what the Lord is trying to teach me. He's allowing me to be in these circumstances of need so that I ask him and I expect him to provide. So two weeks before the Ireland retreat, I'm talking to the volunteers. I'm calling, texting, emailing, begging every priest I know in America, in Ireland, in Rome, to please come and to be our chaplain. And a very wise priest friend of mine said to me, Beth, the Lord knows who he wants. You've just got to wait for him to reveal it. Now, those are very wise words, Father. <laughs> but in the waiting, in the waiting for God to reveal that he's a provider, to reveal that he's faithful to provide, I have to trust, I have to lean on that scaffolding of my previous experience with God, believing that he knows who he wants on that retreat and, and waiting for him to reveal. Now that doesn't mean that I sit back and I, I don't ever ask a priest. No, I'm still asking my volunteers, my team, I'm praying. And it happened one morning, I was in mass on the feast of Saints Simon and Jude. Now, St. Jude and I, we have a challenging history. <laughs> I asked him for something. He was like, you don't need me. I'm the wrong guy for this. It's not hopeless. I'm like, okay, moving right along. New saint. <laughs> so I've never really had a devotion to St. Jude, but I was there in mass on his feast day. He is the patron saint of hopeless or lost causes. And so I, I just said to St. Jude, his, his relics were right there at the mass. And I looked right at him and I said, St. Jude, I never ask you for anything. You've got to get me a chaplain. Like this is hopeless. We are two weeks away from an international retreat. I don't know who our chaplain's going to be. I, I can't buy a plane ticket at this point. Anyway, I left it at that. I just said, I never ask you for anything. I need a chaplain. And the very next day, wouldn't you know it, we got a chaplain. And not only a chaplain, not a run of the mill chaplain. The Lord didn't just want to give us, you know, he didn't want to slap together a couple of priests. I'm available from this time to this time, but I can't come this day. Oh, we'll take this other priest. He's local. He can come, but he'll have to leave again. Do you see what I'm saying? That's what I was tempted to do, to try and make it fit, make it work. But the next day, the Lord gave us a chaplain. We were so blessed to have uh, Archbishop Jude Thaddeus Ocolo, Papal Nuncio to Ireland, as our retreat chaplain. The most humble, joyful, <laughs> humble, kind priest. He was the perfect fit for that weekend. And his name, did you miss that? Did you hear it? His name was Jude Thaddeus. Not even like Jude Joseph or Jude <laughs> Mark, I don't know. His name was Jude Thaddeus. The Lord wants me to know that he's trustworthy, that he hears my prayers, that his saints are on my side, that scaffolds my hope and my faith. I'm now taking that as evidence that God is a provider. Isn't that incredible? What a gift. What a guy. Say a prayer for Archbishop Jude Thaddeus Ocolo. God bless him. So, this uh, experience of Archbishop Jude Thaddeus being with us 
was a mutual blessing to us. He shared the ways in which the retreat blessed him um, and they arranged his schedule in such a way that he was able to not be at certain things that he didn't know how to say no to and he could be totally present to us. It was a, a, it was a huge mutual blessing to the both of us. And that scaffolds my faith, my hope in a deeper way because I, I'm now given the vision to see that it's not only about arranging for my little needs, my, um, my very uh, immediate needs. No, God has, has a big vision for my life and, and he's moving pieces to not only bring about good for me, but to bring about good in other people's lives. And, and I share that because I don't know what you are waiting for God to provide for you. I don't know if it's your vocation, if it's a job, if you're waiting for him to, to come through for your child in a way. You see them, they're, they're praying, they're crying out to God and they're losing faith and you're just begging God, please provide for my child. I can't even do this for them, God, would you do it? But believe me that the Lord is not only arranging it to bless your child or to bless your spouse or to bless that person that you love that you're interceding for. He's not only arranging to provide for these minuscule needs. You don't need to, you don't need to size down your prayer and ask less. No, God is bringing out about a big vision. He's going to bless many, many people through his provision for you. He's arranging it to bring about his ultimate will in other people's lives as well. Don't be discouraged when God hasn't come through yet because that doesn't mean he's not coming through. It just means he hasn't come through yet. And thank him in advance for all the things that he's aligning in multiple people's lives down through the generations to provide not only for you, but for other people. I want to share with you a verse, an anchoring verse to convince you that God is trustworthy, that he is a provider. I want you to stake your claim on this verse. It comes to us from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. He's actually sharing with them his gratitude. He's writing to the, the Christians, the saints in that city who have sent him gifts, who have provided for him. And in verse 19, uh, St. Paul says, and my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Whoa, there's so much there. He will fully satisfy, not like he'll scrape by, not like you'll get the leftovers. You will be fully satisfied in every need, not just the big things, not just the urgent things, everything that you need. Jesus tells us in, in Matthew 6, the Father knows everything that you need and God will provide for every need of yours according to, not according to his good mood, his... Uh, his great idea, he's not, he's not doing it according to how much energy he has that day. He's, he's granting your needs according to his riches. His riches. That means abundantly he's going to provide because his abundance is inexhaustible. The, what he has at his fingertips, his resources, his creativity is riches. It's above and beyond more than what we could ask or imagine. That's what he says in Ephesians 3.20. We can ask or imagine and God's gonna do more than that, above and beyond, abundantly provide according to his riches, not according to our minuscule ask. He's a provider. He's got a bigger vision than even the need that you're zeroed in on. He will abundantly supply according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Isn't that good news? Isn't that a good word? I think you might need to write that verse down, like write it out for yourself, put it on the refrigerator, hang it up, say it to yourself, claim it, and my God will supply for, I will be fully satisfied every one of my needs according to his riches, not my resources, not what I can think up. No, 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 the Lord will do it. The Lord himself will provide. It's who he is and it's what he does. You know, I had some really beautiful prayer uh, just yesterday. I was thinking about God as Father. And what would it mean for my life, for my daily life, 
If I actually believed that I was a daughter of the true father, a father who is a provider, who is a protector, a father who is the king, right? We believe that about God, that he's the king of the universe. That's the title that we celebrated, the reality that we celebrated this past Sunday. Jesus Christ, king of the universe, and not only king of the universe, but my father, my father and your father, the king of the universe is your father. So what would it look like if I actually believed that the king of the universe was my intimate, loving, attentive father? Wouldn't that mean that all of his riches were mine? Wouldn't that mean that I was important and special? Wouldn't that mean that the king would have every resource at his disposal to provide for me, to comfort me, to make things happen in my favor? Wouldn't that mean that God would open doors for people just by virtue of me being his daughter, the daughter of a king? Wouldn't that mean that I would have special favor out in the world? Wouldn't I be more secure if I truly believed that my father was a king? I know that I would believe that he could provide. If I actually believed that my father was a king, I wouldn't have any doubts that he could provide. So I wanna leave you with two things today. I wanna to ask you to take an inventory of the ways in which God has already provided. I want you to start imagining and building up, taking an inventory uh, to build up your scaffolding so that the next time you're in need, you have this bank of evidence. You have a, a, a strong support system beneath you. God has come through for me in the past. I know he's a provider. I know he's the king of the universe. He has resources to, to spend at my disposal. Okay, so take an inventory and then, friends, this is, this is the fun part. Well, taking the inventory is pretty fun too. But then I want you to dream with God beyond your little needs, beyond the immediate needs that already feel kind of out of control and impossible, uh, I want you to think wider, further out. I, I want you to dream with God. Uh, remember Ephesians 3, 10, 3.20 that God will give us above and beyond what we can ask or imagine. So let's start asking and let's start imagining and he'll do above and beyond. Even that. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, you are a good Father. You are the King. And thank you, God, that you've adopted us into your family, into your heart, that you've taken us into your home, into your kingdom. And God, we want to begin to claim all that is ours in Christ Jesus. All of the riches in glory in Christ Jesus are ours by virtue of our baptism. So God, we take your hand and we take up this right as your beloved sons and daughters, your, your beloved heir in Christ Jesus. Thank you that you provide. Thank you that you're blessing us more than we can ask or imagine, God. Thank you that you're fully satisfying every need and we trust you to do it how and when and through whomever you choose God because we know you're trustworthy. We know you're good for it. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, God. In your name we pray. Amen, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, my friends. I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>